Uh, welcome to the Whiskey Bowl. I'm Daniel. I'm Rex. This is Yeehaw. Glenn Livet, the Nadura. This is from Patrick Cohn. Patrick Cohn, you are an amazing human being. Yes, thank I you. And good looking. Now, this is one of the many things. We're also going to do one from him tomorrow. Yes. Uh, but this is the Glenn Livet Nadura. Yes. Now, remember that the Nadura is their Glenn Livet release uh, series okay. of high proof. Right. And like cask strength and unshill filtered. Sure. Now we did the Nadura before. Okay. But this one Kay. is peated. A peated Nadura? I didn't know Glenn Livet did anything. I know. Oh. Okay. Right? All right. All right. So mm. one of the oldest distilleries, the oldest licensed Highland distillery. They did not go crazy with the peat here. The <laughs> peat shows up, but it doesn't dominate. So you know why? It's not crawling out of the glass. You know why? You're going to love this story. Okay. They didn't peat the whiskey. Okay. What they did was what we're doing with the bourbon. They took a Glenlivet and moved it into barrels oh. that used to hold peated so whiskey. So they finished it. Yes. In a peated in a peated barrel. Oh, interesting. How cool is oh, that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I think is brilliant if you're trying to provide subtlety to with peat, an accent of peat. Right, but yeah. not to have peated whiskey be the dominant yeah. flavor profile yeah, yeah. that you're trying to tame with sherry casks and used bourbon. Yeah, yeah, nice. Isn't that a cool idea? Do we know what kind of peated cask? Like what was originally in it? No, no, we just know it was a peated cask. All right. So underneath the, the very noticeable accent. I'm, right? not, I'm not getting the noticeable accent of peat. Are you I'm kidding? getting a, like a mulch note that maybe if you told me it was peat, I would be like, sure, why not? No, no, it's, like if it's this was not, lined up with the other Glenlivets. It's not smoke, meaty, no. hammy. Yeah. If this was lined up with the other Glenlivets and you said one of these was aged in peated casks, I would pick this one. Yes, of course. Right? Yeah. But it's not presenting as a peated whiskey. So you say a mulchy, I'm going to say earthy. Yeah. It's not going to be smoky. It's going to no. be, it's going to present as like an earthiness. But there is like a, and then there's a like a dried leaves. Yeah, yeah, like a forest type of deal. Yeah, but not wet, dry. Yeah. Now you can't miss it on the taste. Oh yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Whoa! I wonder how long it was in those peated. The, if the if it's an oh here you go if it's an accent on the nose three to three months. To three years. Wow, okay. That'll do it. Yeah. What's an accent on the nose? It's dominant. Shows up in spades on the taste. It's at least 30% of the flavor is this peat at, accent. At least, yeah. If you're new to peat, then it may overwhelm. This, I don't know, man. We've we've really stumbled onto some cool whiskeys that I think are good introductions to peat. Mm -hmm. And I think this could be a good gateway. So not first, first step introduction to peat. This is going to be like step three or four. If you're doing like a what is Lafroig on your steps? How many steps in is Lafroig ten? This is a twelve-step program. <laughs> That's w very well defined in this your is, brain. Yeah, <laughs> so my twelve-step program is totally different. <laughs> <laughs> wow, there's this... nut pine nuts. Okay, yeah. You know what it reminds me of? You ever um, buy a bag of pine nuts? I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a sunflower seed. There's, yeah, but they're sold on the same aisle as the sunflower seeds. They're unshelled, okay. and you can just buy a bag of pine nuts. Yeah, I know. And that's what this reminds me of. All right. And then the maltiness, and then... And then there's a light, fruity note, but it's really, yeah. really buried underneath the peat. I'm finding... Mulchy, earthy I'm peat. now finding a creamy caramel on the nose, along with the things we were mentioning earlier. Oh, I like it. Uh, this might be my favorite Glenlivet. <laughs> <laughs> Any version of just adds peat somewhere in the process. This is my new favorite of this whiskey. Uh, this is from Tiny Tiny Dwarf on the Whiskey Tribe Sun Reddit. When Tiny, and Tiny how Dwarf. often do you take a glass? Yeah, how much do you drink? Just wondering how often you boys take a glass of whiskey because taking one or two in the middle of the week feels wrong. Not because I don't do it, but because I've sort of painted it as a weekend drink. But mm. I just love it so much I have a glass in the weekend. Uh, also, when is the next dry week? So I don't know when the next dry week is. We just did oh, one. Oh, we're doing a Whiskey Tribe calendar. Yeah, yeah. And we're so, going to post it to the website. We're going to be posting a Whiskey Tribe calendar so people can see when the upcoming dry winks and events and various things are happening. For, for, for your sake as much as mine, because sometimes, you know, I stumble into a window of time where stuff needs to be delivered and happening. It's like, I, like, I have no I, idea. It's okay. too late now. Right. Um, okay, so here's, here's what I would say. I, I, there are wide variations, especially in America, where alcohol has this weird taboo with it. 
of uh, what's normal drinking, sure. right? So like right now, if it was left to my wife and I and my dad, we drink whiskey, you know, every day, right? roughly speaking, five days a week. Sure. But it's, you know, it's a sip here, it's a drink with dinner or something like that. Mm -hmm. Now, when I was growing up, that was not the case. My mom was anti-alcohol, grew up in a family that alcohol was the devil. And until maybe junior high for me, right. late elementary by my memory, right. she got comfortable with my dad having a beer right. in the house. Well, yeah, I, I was born in Oklahoma, right? So that whole... He was born in Oklahoma. That whole scene. His wife's name, Betty Lou, Thelma Liz. <laughs> like, my, my <laughs> parents never even dabbled in the beer and wine yeah. until they were in their 30s. Okay. They were in their 30s. Yeah, that would have been my parents. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, they still don't do hard alcohol. Well, it took it took a decade or so before my dad started drinking hard liquor. Yeah. Right? He was introduced to beer at a gig when our Irish uh, owner and bartender of Waterworks in Waco, sure. Sean, yeah. said, why don't you try this Guinness? Right. And my dad went, what's that? Right. And he went, drink this Guinness, you asshole. <laughs> and he drank and went, oh, a whole new world. And he sang like Ariel. A new fantastic. That wasn't Ariel. That was uh, Aladdin. It's a Disney. Thing. It's a Disney movie. That's all I remember. You probably got a copyright strike now. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. So 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 I would say, do what's best for you and your family. Understanding that your family is more important than whiskey. Yep. That thing. And play nice. So I'm, you're you actually are bearing witness to me doing ninety percent of my drinking. Yeah, on camera. <laughs> that's most of the drinking. That's most of the drinking. And then on Fridays. If I'm able to get away from the tribe editing, mm -hmm. if I can have that basically done for the Saturday morning release, then I'll go to the distillery hangout. But then out you're with, just joining the other Magnificent Hanging passwords. out with the MBs. And yeah. then at home, about once every two weeks, I will pour a glass. And it's because, like, my work has so much whiskey involved. It's not even sound good anymore when you get home. Yeah. Okay, so this is Yellow Rose. This is another Texas distillery. Yes. Right? Yes. Now, early on, Yellow Rose was sourcing everything. Okay. But this, yeah. according to the bottle, yeah. is outlaw bourbon. Okay. Something Yellow Rose made themselves. That somebody sent us. That somebody sent us, not somebody, is Bridget Faraday. Bridget Faraday, you magnificent bastard. Fight. So we, uh, Yellow Rose was at our grand opening. Oh yeah. Remember Houston was there pouring whiskey. Yeah, yeah. Everybody loved him. Everybody loved the whiskey. They're good people. Mm, so um, they're not a part of the Texas Whiskey Association yet, but uh, I, I, we hope to, we hope to have them because now that they're making their own stuff, then there's no reason they shouldn't be on it. It's it's whiskey a whiskey trail. Beautiful, creamy. Caramel and sherry. These are the guys who On broke the boundary for having a distillery in Houston. Okay, so mm -hmm. the first in Houston. This is complex, man, because there's this sort of Texas Hill Country dust note to okay. this smell. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there, and there's a sweet caramel right in the middle of it, yeah. but it's centered and around it is this earthy, planty, Texas dry dust. And, and, but then the cherry, though. Yeah, but that cherry, the candied though. middle. But that cherry, though. There's yeah, a candied it's middle. It's a creamy caramel cherry. Caramel cherry. Now this is a hundred percent yellow corn, which means if they wanted to, this could be a corn whiskey. Yeah, it smells really nice. So we are dare hot distilled. Pot oh, distilled that's, bourbon. That's where the saturation. Of Forty-six percent. By the way, this is batch eighteen eleven. Yeah, yeah. And bottle eleven hundred and eighty-six. Mm -hmm. I really love oh, the bottles. Man. Oh, the taste is. It's a really nice nose. Beautiful taste. Yeah, that's what it is. There's this black tea eucalyptusy note, mm -hmm. but it's but it's really honey sweet surrounding mm -hmm. it. And then there is that weird cherry. It's almost like you made a glass of iced sweet iced tea yeah. and dropped a maraschino cherry into it. Yeah. That's oh, the weirdest yeah, thing. Right on. Weird, but you're these are squarely uh you know traditional whiskey flavors. They are just Playing and flirting with each other in a really nice way, really but complimentary, really balanced. On the finish of the nose, there's this dusty dried hay note. Dusty dried hay, and then there's, all right. So the barrel shows up for me not as oak, but mm -hmm. as this nice little thin thread of a tanniny bitter note that yeah. doesn't go too far. I it totally just, agree. It just keeps it from being, you know, too one-dimensionally sweet. 
I say one-dimensional, there's several sweet things going on, but two just sweet flavors playing with each other. There's this nice little... This is under one year old. Just a bunch of Smoke, uh, small barrels. How dare you? Small barrels. How dare you? How dare you be that good with small barrels in less than one year? <laughs> Honestly, because I've said this so many times, whiskey making and uh, hell even sourcing, just the whole industry, it's one of the dumbest business models you could possibly get into if you're trying to like make some money. It's idiotic. Yeah. Like, people get into this because they just love whiskey. If you want to be rich, <laughs> then starting a whiskey business is a wrong move. <laughs> right. Uh, it's like, hey, let's let's make stuff and then you know wait years to figure out if it's good. <laughs> yeah, and let's uh, do it. Fingers crossed. <laughs> and then not be able to sell any meaningful amount of people that come to us. Yeah, to have to figure out how to get it on the shelves. You know what? The shelf space is uh, already taken. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. son of a bitch. Yeah. Now, whoever is working with Yellow Rose has done a really good job of getting it out there distribution-wise. Yeah. Because I've been to weird random airport bars that had Yellow Rose whiskey. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right on. We got the uh, 192 proof. This is the Magnificent Bastard playlist. Hey, MBs, I recently asked in the Facebook group what music you listen to while sipping your favorite dram. Based on the tribe suggestions, I put together a wee Spotify yeah. playlist. So here's the result. Result. Hope you enjoy. Cheers. If uh, you want to find that Spotify playlist, go into the Whiskey Tribe Reddit and search Spotify. You'll probably find his post. We'll just put it in the. We'll just put it in the description below. The link. Chad, put it in the description below. There. It's fine. It's in the description below. We'll spot a whiskey trap spot up there. Now, I love the idea of that, yeah. but now, I added, what do you listen to? I petitioned for a song to be added to the playlist. To that playlist? Yes. What was it? Uh, this was The Sound of Silence, covered by... Oh! Covered the heavy metal band. Disturbed. Uh, caw, caw, caw. Yeah, Disturbed. Covered yeah, by yeah, Disturbed. Yeah. Now, they don't get, like, you know, heavy with it, but the way that they... It's, just, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So, The Sound of Silence, covered by Disturbed. It's a, I love what they did with that song. I don't like the song. You do? Oh, how could you not like the song? Artistically, it's an amazing song. Uh, artistically, I appreciate what they did and admire them oh, for it. Oh my god! I don't like it. Oh, everything about that song is amazing. I even watched that song being covered by like a seven-year-old girl on YouTube just because I loved the song so much. Well, the song's amazing, but not their cover of it. Oh, the original song is amazing. I'm going back to the Nadura repeated because Pete. I'm not easily offended. <laughs> but so, here's the thing. <laughs> you choose 50 songs out of that playlist. Here's to fighting, stealing, oh, and no, drinking. No, I'm not doing that. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. You steal, may you steal lover's heart. And if you drink, <laughs> may you drink with <laughs> us. <laughs> hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw on a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.